In this video, I'll be going over how to render displacement maps from ZBrush into 3D Studio Max. So, just like in the My Tutorial, um, when we were dealing with displacement maps, by default, it doesn't render properly. Another thing to keep in mind is when you run, want to render, make sure your renderer is set to Mental Ray. So, I just go to my render settings here, and I already set mine to Mental Ray. For those who do not know how to do that, just scroll down, assign renderer. Under production, click on this and make sure you choose the uh, mental ray one. By default, it should look like this, and you want to change it to mental ray. Our default settings should work fine. If you want a higher resolution render, you can always deal with your resolution, that's just like that. So, here's my material editor right now. I just have my default standard material. What I want to do when dealing with mental ray is um, when I'm adding displacement maps, I don't want to put it inside the default displacement maps in here. I want to deal with it under the uh, MR connection under displacement. Let me double click on this. You have a mental ray connection, we have displacement. Unlock this. This way you can add a 3D displacement or height map displacement. We use 3D displacement right here. Give you extrusion map, direction mapping, etc. You want to keep all these values exactly the same. <coughs> I'm going to load into the extrusion map and go to bitmap. This is where I choose my displacement map file. Let's do a quick render to see how it looks like. It looks bloated. So what you need to do is you want to essentially change how the offset is. So I'm going to go inside my file now, double click on this open up output, where your offset is just like we were dealing with inside um, Maya, we're going to set this also to negative 0.5. Once we have that, I go in here and render. And there you go, this place map works. The other problem we always typically have is not having enough subdivisions. So to deal with that, just make sure your mesh is selected, go under here, go to Turbo Smooth, and instead of having the main iteration set to 1, you want to turn on render iterations and turn this up how many times you feel you need. Now for render, you might smooth some of the kinks out, some slight little changes here and there, but it will render and subdivide during um, render and not inside the viewport. So here we have a lot sharper details, it's not kind of rough anymore like we had before, and that's how we deal with displacement map inside uh, 3ds Max. Now let's apply this idea to a skin shader. So I'm going to launch this up again. For those who are new to 2011, by default the skin shader is a bit different than um, in 2011, uh, 2010, mainly because uh, the compositing is turned off. So you want to make sure you choose the proper version of your uh, skin shader. Right here I'm using subsurface scattering, fast skin, plus displacement. I'm going to drag this in instead. We already have these nodes made, so I don't have to use this again. I'm just going to drag this one and drop that right into displacement. I'm going to assign my shader to my object. And there we go. If I render this by default, it's going to look a bit different. Uh, this goes with every single uh, scene you brought from 2010 to, the, to 2011. You'll notice it'll look kind of weird. Like your object looks way shinier than it normally is. That's the case we're running into. If you run into this problem, the simple fix is double click onto your shader, scroll down, and just check on screen soft compositing of layers. Now if we render this, it takes longer of course. But it should look just like how you had it in 2010 in prior versions of 3ds Max. I recommend dealing with this mode because your subsurface scattering um, is a lot more accurate. Um, so um, that's how you deal with displacement maps with a skin shader and a standard shader inside 3ds Studio Max.